everyone. Good evening and welcome to Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it is time for the Matt Painter Show, brought to you by Jim Co. Constructors. Jim Co. Constructors is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Matt Painter Show and a proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Jim Co. Constructors says Boiler up. I am Rob Blackman, Coach Painter. Uh, he, he, he needed a last-second fill-in tonight. Assistant Coach Paul Lusk is going to fill in for Coach Paint this evening. Coach Painter uh, got called away recruiting this evening at the last minute, so Coach Lusk going to fill in. Now, listen, we have a rule here on the Coach Matt Painter Show. If you have to make a decision between being on the radio show and possibly finding the next Zach Eady, you go out and go ahead and try to find the next Zach Eady. So that's why Coach Painter had to be a, get a quick fill-in tonight. So we appreciate Coach Paul Lusk filling in for him this evening. Uh, we have a lot to talk about with Coach Lusk, um, starting with the two games that uh, have happened since we last spoke here on this radio program. That, of course, a win over Northwestern in overtime at Mackey Arena, a game in which Purdue scored 105 points. And then uh, the game on Sunday against Wisconsin, a game in which Purdue scored 75 points and still came away victorious. So two games that uh, probably couldn't have been more polar opposites, at least certainly for Purdue offensively, yet Purdue still finds a way to win both of those. And with the win over Wisconsin Sunday, Purdue now sets all alone atop the standings in the Big Ten with eight games remaining. More good news for our Boilermakers. If you missed it earlier today, ranked number two yet again this week in the Associated Press Top 25. That is now 30 weeks 30 weeks straight, Purdue's been in the top five in the AP Top 25 poll. This is quite an unprecedented run for Purdue basketball. So we're going to talk with Coach, uh, Coach Lusk about all those things. And, of course, we will preview this Saturday night's matchup against Indiana when the Ho clock tip. Uh, so a lot of things to talk about with Coach Paul Lusk, and we will visit with him on the other side of this timeout. This is the Matt Painter Show presented by Jimco on the Purdue Global Sports Network. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Luck would have given it to Edie. Jones steps into it. Bottom back. A three. There's a local kid having a ball. Smith gets to the rim. Plus one. And flexing. Probing. Drop step. D9. Do not go in there on Zach Edie. That time, nice drop step. Unfortunately, the leading tower with his impact. Nice read by E.D. That showed up effective. Trying to go through Ren early here. 36-34. Jones tosses it up. Gets it to go. Does that contest threw him off a little bit? What a counter. Bullseye for Pepper. Feed it. Crowd. And it's E.D. Bullet feed. E.D. takes it off the glass and in. Badgers are now 3 of 11 from downtown. Look at this alley -oop. Oh, it's E.D. upstairs to Rodasaurus. You can try it all, but e. Smith fakes as though the screen is coming to the top of the key. And E.D. pounds it home. So far by Wall. Look at this. Wall. Stymie. And knock away. Wall. Rejected by E.D. Just so tough against them. Giving away those inches. You really got to look for a cutter. One way you're getting around it. This is just offense at its best. You lock and load. Egan, deep one. Off the rim. Look who's yeah. there. The offensive board. Wall, knock away. Smith gets a piece, and it's a turnover. Jones rushing ahead. Jones takes it in for two. Big, Big bucket for Purdue. Big turnaround. You're right. Smith with the active hands. And another steal. Braden Smith knocked it away from Klesman. Welcome back to the Matt Pater Show, presented by Jimco, live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Rob Blackman tonight joined by assistant coach Paul Lusk, and we appreciate you finding us on uh, on maybe the radio dial or the Varsity Network app, or maybe you're watching tonight on Purdue's YouTube page or the uh, the X page uh, or Twitter. I think we call it X now, don't we? Maybe the Purdue's Facebook page, whatever it is. If you have found us tonight, we thank you for going through the trouble. I understand that it is a Tuesday night, so please know this. This is our last Tuesday night show of the year. Beginning next Monday, it's Monday nights through the rest of the season. So... Mondays from here on out, starting next Monday at 6 o'clock here at Walk-Ons. Uh, Coach Paul Lusk, let us begin with where, I guess, where I ended the last segment. 
the fact that Purdue wins two games last week in two very, very different styles. 105 points in overtime to beat Northwestern, 75 points in a grinder at Madison. The good news, you found a way to win both. The even better news, two very different styles of play. Yeah, that's always important, right? Uh, I think we've shown that we've got the ability to play different styles. We're scoring uh, the ball more this year. We're getting out in transition a little bit, but at some point it's gonna you're going to have one of those uh, games where you just have to grind it out. And Wisconsin's a very good team. Uh, Northwestern's very good. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. we talked about uh, the week prior to us playing Northwestern, we all walked in, our staff, uh, and, and we were talking about the Northwestern-Illinois game the week before, mm -hmm. which I believe went to overtime and was yes, just a very, very high-level game. High-level shot making. Uh, then they turn around a week later, and I think our game might have topped that because both teams, both uh, players on both teams just – played at a very high level, and we were able to uh, find a way to win. So here's the thing. I talk about polar opposites in a lot of ways. In, sh in, in three-point shooting, in the Northwestern win, 47% from three. That's pretty good. Wisconsin game, 27% from three. Not good. Yet you still find a way to win. Yeah, and Nor our, uh, Wisconsin really did a very good job of limiting our overall threes. We didn't yeah. take well, just took 11. Right, and, and, and we've been trying to shoot more, so they did a great job with that. The other thing about styles of play in the two games in particular, I've never seen it like with the Alabama game. They made 19 threes, yeah. and we still found a way to win. Right. Uh, Northwestern was on absolute fire. They only had five turnovers, I believe, uh, which they're always a low turnover team, and we still found a way to win. So what's that say? Uh, we, we're, we're scoring the ball. I thought we did a really good job of, of not turning the ball over against Northwestern. I think we ended up with 11. Uh, uh, 10 in that game. 10, 10 yep. yeah, and we did a very good job. So uh, getting back like earlier in the season, all these different games and the different styles that you play, you'll remember up in Toronto with Alabama, they made 13 threes in the first, first half. half. Oh, yeah, and I remember. I believe we were up. I, I think we were up. And we walked in, and we were like, holy cow, we're still up. There's <laughs> yeah. no way they can continue this uh, high-level high shooting. But they did. But, yeah, two different styles uh, last week, and we were able to find a way to win. Well, I'm glad you mentioned turnovers. To me, of all the uh, interesting stats that came out of that win on Sunday, Wisconsin had only five turnovers for the entire game, five. They only had two in the second half, but they were huge because they came on back-to-back -back possessions yes. at the end of the game when the game was hanging in the balance. Purdue only had two takeaways the entire second half, but they were probably on the two biggest possessions of the game defensively for us, I thought. Yeah, and they were kind of broken plays. They were pushing the basketball. Braden got the one steal. Um, yeah, so those are th those were pivotal. Wisconsin always does a great job of taking care of the basketball. Um, they're very secure with it. So when you go on the road and, and you're playing in those types of games – uh, you, you obviously don't want to turn it over, and then you want to get – we're not getting a lot of extra possessions from uh, the way we play defense. Yeah. We're, we're, we're solid, but we're not getting out in passing lanes. We're not getting steals. So we try to get our extra possessions on the offensive glass. So the numbers say this. The opponent averages, on the average, 10, 10 turnovers a game. That's the opposition. Purdue averages 11 turnovers a game. Can you live with that? Can you live with those two numbers? 11 for us, 10 for the opponent. Yeah, I mean, I think you can. Like, as I said, we're never going to uh, be a team that creates a lot of havoc on the defensive end and, and, and turn people over at a high rate. The whole key is just taking care of the basketball. Um, I think we can be better than 11, like yeah. a, less than that. And, one, and, and the numbers show that once we are, we're in, we're in pretty good position. We'll give ourselves a chance to win the game. Well, so if you go with the, just the turnover numbers, that means on the average you're minus one possession per game uh, in the turnover battle. But when you're plus 11 on the glass, right. that ends up being plus 10 overall, right? That's where, that's where Purdue really makes its hay yeah, is the rebounding. I mean, you, you, you're not going to be great at everything. Uh, you, you, try to, you try to hit on the points that are really important, but we really emphasize getting on the glass, whether that's defensive rebounding, checkouts, and – and then creating extra opportunities on the offensive end. And I think we've been really good at that. Uh, there was just one – was it the week before, Rob? You, there's so many games where at uh, Rutgers we got out-rebounded. Only game all year. And I think year. we only, only had game. five offensive rebounds. But uh, 
we were able to find a way to get once again different type of game, but we were able to find a way to win. Yeah, Purdue's been only out-rebounded one time all year. That was at Rutgers. The only other game that was close was Gonzaga, where both Purdue and Gonzaga had the exact same amount uh, of rebounds for the game. Uh, more with Coach Lusk when we come back. This is the Matt Painter Show presented by Jimco on the Purdue Global Sports Network. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Smith, Nicholson chasing him out. That leaves Edie alone against Barnhouse. The Cats want to be up with the screen. You've got Kaufman Wren posting Barnheiser, but that whole backside of the floor. But it's strong on the three from Barnheiser. Smith looking to push ahead to Jones to the rim for two. Of late, travel. So far it has. Three of five from three. They were shooting 57% the last two games from three. As Lloyd answers with one of his own. Group that they have shot the ball so well in a more offensive-oriented group. Right. He really struggled in that first half. He's right at the ship in the second. Gillis, the open man. What a to Edie. There's the trap from Martinelli. Return to Jones for three. Rattles home for tied at 66. Edie has the trap. Back to Jones. Got the open look. Same result. That's like the same exact. Bouncing to Edie. Hunger all over and count the bucket. And the foul. Feet, but Brayden Smith is equally as good. Never panics. Could have let this fly. But instead, he, he makes the right decision. A minute gone in overtime. Smith to Edie oh. for two plus one. Going to be the weak side help man. As Edie rolls, he's got to take on Edie. Gets him a little bit, but he's scared about getting back out to Lance Jones. See if they go out and Barry goes down. Inside to Edie. A laser pass for Brandon Smith. This ball needs to go inside. Goes Edie on the roll. Smith oh, right. big one. Northwestern Wildcat go down. The footwork on this play, though, is just excellent. So many guys in the court. Smith off the shot fake. Open lawyer for three. And just an incredible pass again. We've said it so many times. Fletcher Lawyer's wide open, and Sam Cassell would be so proud. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Show, everyone. Tonight we are at walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Before we move a little further with assistant coach Paul Lusk, I do want to welcome in a new radio station affiliate to our Purdue Basketball Radio Network, WJAA Total Rock Radio 96.3 in Jackson County. Nice to have you folks aboard for, with us for the rest of the season, and uh, thanks for making us a part of your, uh, your Purdue basketball community. Uh, Coach Lusk, I do want to talk about the play, especially in the last, oh, I don't know, four, five, six games, of Lance Jones. <laughs> he, he has been outstanding, I think it's safe to say. Um, let, me, let, let me make sure I have the numbers correct. 26 points in that win against Northwestern in the midweek game. And then Sunday, was it 20? It was 9, yeah, it was 20, yeah. 20, 20 yeah. and 6 rebounds in that game. It was, Purdue only made three threes in the entire game against Wisconsin. Lance made all three of them. He, man, he's been playing at a high level, and it feels even like. even the week before the Rutgers game, he yeah. didn't make a shot. Right. But he, he played a terrific Almost had game. a double-double with, with four points. Right. And then I think he had 24 before that against Michigan. So he's been a great addition on and off the floor. Um, you know, a lot of guys, you go, you talk about that Rutgers game, you go through a game where you struggle from the field. Is that going, going to impact your confidence? And it really doesn't with Lance. Uh, I've seen it happen in games. I remember the Arizona game. He had missed a couple. Uh, and then Arizona went to that zone, and he hit a big one late. So he's been a great addition. Uh, he's helped us on both ends. I think he's helped. Uh, loosen our guys up. He's he's got a great spirit to him. He's always having fun. Uh, I think he loves being here. Loves being a part of the program, and and uh, the feeling is mutual because we all we all are excited about him. So the, the so the resume on him coming to Purdue, at least what I read, was all about his defensive ability. Twice he was All Missouri Valley Conference All Defensive Team. Offensively, from a coaching staff standpoint, as you brought him in from the portal. Did you know you're getting this good of an offensive player, too? Well, he was all league uh, 
on both sides of the ball. His sophomore year, his sophomore year, he led the league in three-point shooting gotcha. in the Valley. Now he dipped uh, in the following two years, but I actually uh, got interviewed about Lance today, and we were the guy was asking a bunch of different questions. He goes, "Did you know that he would be this good?" And and when do you when did you see it? Like we felt he was going to be good. We had a particular need that we had it that that we needed. And uh, we felt like he would fit that well. Um, I think we noticed right away in the summer, uh, getting mm -hmm. ready for Europe and in the, in the practices, he just he played really hard. And th it looked like, man, there's an opportunity this guy could work his way into the starting lineup. So uh, as he's gotten more comfortable, um, he's just he's been terrific. Uh, to, so I can uh, give a little validation to that. I can remember coming to one of those summer practices, preparing for the European trip, and setting off to the side with you, and asking you specifically about uh, specifically about Lance. And you said to me at that time, you know what? I think he's going to end up starting for us. I, I remember I, you specifically telling me that. Yeah, I really felt that, and uh, there were it was it was those early practices uh, we were having. He just. He was getting on the floor, and when you're a young, when you're a new player coming in, even with all of his experience, uh, the guy that interviewed me today about Lance, he said that Lance had mentioned to him that he was really nervous. Lance mm. coming here, you know, mm. trying to find his way, uh, as all these players uh, go through that. But uh, I thought he established himself from day one, um, and. Uh, we just want him to continue to do that. Now, you won't remember this part, luckily, but I'll remind you anyway. I, once you told me that, I can remember saying back to you, well, there's no way we can play Braden and Fletcher and Lance at the same time in the starting lineup. That would be ridiculous. We'd be too small in the backcourt. Once again, proving I know nothing about basketball. Well, and, you were coaching. <laughs> and you, and you, I was doing a poor yeah. job of coaching. <laughs> it was up to me. We've never even started Lance. That's how dumb I am when it comes to basketball strategy. Uh, here's what I – and I was looking at this before the, with the show tonight, Coach. Uh, so Lance has put up some great numbers this year, uh, obviously. But his numbers across the board, scoring, rebounding, uh, uh, steals, three-point shooting percentage, free throw shooting percentage across the board, his numbers are better in Big Ten games yeah. than all games. Now, that, now, you know this. There's a lot of guys that put up some pretty impressive numbers against the lesser competition. Right. And then when the big boys start playing right. you, you kind of come back to earth. He's actually gotten better against the Big Ten teams. Yeah, he's played better. He's made a jump. I think the thing we talked to him about, and obviously when you uh, deal with the portal, and we're not in it a, a lot, but uh, it's kind of like speed dating, right? Like it's decisions have to be made quickly. Well, mm. Once everything checked off, we knew that he was a good player, but once we made all the calls on him, on his character and who he is as a person, great family, uh, we felt like he was the guy. He was the target that we were going to try to get. But one thing that we talked to him about was becoming a more efficient basketball player. He mm -hmm. was upside down with his assist to turnovers at Southern. And we said, hey, you got to get better there. Sometimes you're a high-volume guy uh, shooting. Can you become more efficient? And right now, as you mentioned, he's been really efficient against high-level competition. 38% uh, if you're just looking at Big Ten games on the season, three-point shooting. If you're just looking at the last five games, that number's actually over 40% three-point shooting. So uh, Lance has played his biggest in the biggest moments against the Big Ten teams. Uh, we'll take a break. More in a moment with Coach Lusk. This is the Matt Painter Show presented by Jimco on the Purdue Global Sports Network. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Take Be the more physical team. Multiple efforts, all right? Don't make just one play. Let's play hard with them. All right, let's go, go. Keep on rocking. Keep, keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. This is all right. Everybody hands in the air. Up, oh, four, three, two, three, four. Offensive glass and shooting a ridiculous almost 52 percent from three. It's the power of Zach Eaton there. Eaton is clean. He just wears you out. Into the body of Eaton, and if you don't take up that space, he is going to put it on top of your head. The footwork on this play, though, is just excellent. When it's winning time, 
Look for the best player in basketball. Open oh, Lawyer. Four, three. The 16th assist. Fletcher Lawyer is wide open, and Sam Cassell would be so proud. What a way to end January. Can you throw it? Is he up in your s like that? Okay. We'll flip flop with this. Badgers are now 3 of 11 from downtown. Look at this alley you Oh, it's Edie upstairs. And try it all, but Smith fakes as though the screen is coming to the top of the key. And Edie pounds it home. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Show, presented by Jimco, live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. I'm Rob Blackman, assistant coach Paul Lusk, sitting in the uh, the big seat, filling in for Coach Painter tonight. Uh, time for our Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Uh, tonight, a tip of the cap goes to Raheem Mostert because for those that still pay attention to the Pro Bowl, he was a Pro Bowler representing the Miami Dolphins, the AFC, yesterday in the uh, – or, yeah, Sunday, I beg your pardon, Sunday, uh, in the Pro Bowl competition. I know it's not a real game anymore. It's skills competitions and flag football, but – I think it's still pretty cool that in his ninth season, Raheem Mostert, representing our Boilermakers, is in the Pro Bowl. So congratulations, Raheem, on being a Pro Bowl selection and representing Purdue football as well as you have. Think about how long ago Raheem Mostert was playing. That was like two coaches ago. That was a long time ago. But, man, he's had a heck of a run in the NFL, that's for sure. Uh, Coach Lusk, I want to continue talking about, obviously, Purdue basketball. Uh, more specifically, Zach Eady. We were just uh, throwing the bouquets in the, in the direction of Lance Jones. I said this on the radio broadcast. I'm going to say it uh, during the game Sunday. I'm going to say it again today. Uh, we are now at the point in the season where on my, on my broadcast, and our engineer Wes Scott can, can affirm this, can confirm this, I have to have a separate sheet written up for Zach because it's now at the point in his career where every single game he's either breaking a new record, uh, setting a new record, Moving up some type of chart, whether it be Big Ten, NCA, or Big Ten, or pardon me, or a, or a Purdue, uh, some some new accolade he's setting. Sometimes two or three or four of them every game. That I'm scared to death. I'm going to miss something. Um, has a guy who coaches him. What's it been like? Not only just the domination, but the consistency that he has shown. Yeah, I remember earlier, uh, Rob, when I was here for the radio show where we talked about him and um, everyone uh, in terms of the NBA thing and everyone says well uh, he's a throwback and what's his potential and, and I always tell those NBA guys like he has a tremendous high ceiling in terms of potential like he just keeps getting better. <laughs> he's right? only played seven years right. of basketball. I, I just think he's a big time <laughs> player. He's obviously a game changer. Um I think the narrative the other day was, oh, he wasn't, you know, quite the level that Zach Eady's been at. He had 18 and 13. <laughs> yes, and, and with three blocks. Right. And what, <laughs> what happens, maybe he doesn't get his average in terms of points. Um, but he just, when I say game changer, like the, the, the entire scout is based around stopping him. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that, there's a wear and tear uh, on the other team in terms of how many bigs they throw at him, their whole scheme. So, He's just been outstanding. Uh, he's the best player in the country. Um, he's handled everything the right way. But but the best thing about Zach that I see is he's a creature of habit. He just he he has his routine. All good players have a routine, mm. and and he's got a routine. Uh, he does it daily. Um, most big guys, a lot of big guys that I've been around, like they, they may take a rep off here or there. Uh, he never takes reps off, and I think the the number one quality that he has. Bruce Weber talked about it um, after the Northwestern game. He played 43 minutes. 40, 41, 41, almost 42. Minutes, yes. And you've just, you don't see guys with that type of size, uh, with that type of endurance and stamina, and he just keeps going and going and going. So a credit to him. Uh, so 
just so the I, – and, again, I mentioned this on the broadcast. Some may have heard. I, maybe on TV they talked about it too. I don't know. Uh, but so Zach is now over 2,000 points scored, 1,000 rebounds, 200 block shots. Uh, with those three blocks on Sunday, he went over 200 career blocks. And he's shooting 60% from the floor for his career. There are only two other guys in the history of basketball that have ever done that, put together those numbers. They're named Patrick Ewing and David Robinson. If you are in the conversation with those two guys, you're one of the greatest that's ever played. Uh, it's, you, you, could, you could make that argument, uh, the impact that he's had, obviously, on our program and the way he's been dominant in college basketball. Um, it's something to see. Uh, sixth place now, career rebounds, history of the Big Ten, not, not Purdue. History of the Big Ten. He's now sixth place all time. Uh, he needs 28 more rebounds to get to fifth, and that would pass Trace Jackson Davis. He needs 33. Now, I thought I might get a cheer from this crowd from that one. He need, Now, I don't know if you cheer on the next one. We'll see. He needs 33 to move into fourth place, and that would pass Joe Barry Carroll. So not only would he then move into fourth place Big Ten all time, he'd become Purdue's all time leading rebounder. 33 more rebounds. That's what Big Z needs. And in case you missed it earlier today, or was it yesterday? I keep getting confused. Today's Tuesday. Must have been yesterday. Uh, Zach Eady was named the Big Ten Player of the Week, which means that's now 10 times in his career. 10 times. You Big know, Zach's got humility. Uh, I think I saw on his, he tweeted out yesterday, I wasn't even the best player on my team this week. Mm -hmm. And, like, that gives credit to the other guys. So, um, He's he's uh, he's been a great teammate. He brings it every day. Um, he's gonna he's gonna continue to break a lot of records. Those ten, by the way, ten Big Ten players of the week. Only Evan Turner of Ohio State has ten. So right now, two guys in the history of the Big Ten. They've done it ten times. And of course, Zach still has a few more weeks to try to get number eleven, or who knows, maybe twelve and thirteen uh, to set the all-time record. But uh, hopefully, fans, we've been appreciating what we have seen from Zach Eady, uh, really over these last two years, but quite frankly, the last four years, because he is rewriting the record books for Purdue, for the Big Ten, for the NCAA. And as I started this segment by saying, he is literally doing it every single game. And I'm scared to death I can't keep up, but I'll keep trying my best. Thank you, Zach. Uh, more with uh, Coach Lusk when we come back. It's the Matt Painter Show presented by Jimco on the Purdue Global Sports Network. And this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. On the team. Who's got to get this into Zach Eaton? Favor Ira has fallen down all over the place. And Eaton takes advantage, throws down the dunk for his first two. You just want to leave open the possibility here that it was a strategic decision and not based on any hopes of getting back at you. I, I think mean, it was strategic. Okay, was all right. I just want to make sure you don't see it as a vendetta. Eaton throwing down the jam. Better scoring the ball. He's been much better finding his teammates this year as well. Smith up and under. No. Oh, Edie, the fellow. He rips down the rim. And Purdue just keeping that stiff arm on him right here. Yeah, Zach Eady making his way toward the double double. 10.7 rebounds. He's going up, taking that offensive board. Fletcher Lurie doing a pretty nice job there, just staying in that play and getting a quality contest. Smith over the top to Zach Eady. Boy, it's such a tough action because Mason Gillis has shot the ball so well. Player of the year, Zach Eady. Nine early points, four of seven from the field. Looking for Eady, there he is, one of feed. Credit that to Braden Smith. And that real deep pick and roll. You see that on social media with the song, Let the Bodies Hit the Floor yeah. in the background. And now, lawyers can't even hit oh, the free throw. That's one way to put an end to the spell. Zach Eady, his first bucket. He certainly has. Smith for Eady. And they're going to get a foul to go with it. Count it. Off the dribble. Able to get into the lane uncontested, and now all of a sudden you draw up Wolfolk. Well, sometimes when you will one in, it helps you later on. Edie backs in, slams it home. He got position and used his leverage big time against Cliff Amori there. Smith, Nicholson chasing him out. That leaves Edie alone against Barnhouse. <laughs> For Northwestern, remember Nicholson fouled out before the end of regulation. A minute gone. This is the Matt Painter Show presented by Jim Coe, live tonight at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. 
Again, a quick reminder, fans, uh, I know it's Tuesday tonight, but next week we'll return to our normal Monday night format, Monday night 6 o'clock, and then we'll be with you Monday nights through the uh, balance of the regular season for the rest of our shows this year. The 2023-24 Purdue basketball season is presented by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Earn a degree you're proud of and employers respect. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Assistant Coach Paul Lusk filling in for Coach Painter tonight here on the Coach's Show. Okay, Coach Lusk, you're, you're, maybe Coach Painter's glad he's not here for this next question because it was the talk of the message boards after that Northwestern win midweek. Did we see Purdue playing zone defense? Yes. Oh, uh, we, be still my beating heart. I mean, just we really kind of loaded up uh, on Boo. He's such a dynamic player. Um People that have tried, they, they search out switches. Uh, he's, he's so dynamic. Uh, he gets in the paint. So we just, we really just kind of tilted everything and loaded to him. And we, we, we didn't spend much time on it. Um, but it was, it, I think what happens is when a team finds offensive rhythm, do you have something you can go to? We certainly weren't going to keep doing it the way we did it. Mm. Uh, the first time we played them. And if you watched what they do to people, they, they search out switches, they get them in an ISO, uh, and I thought we tried to load up on them. Uh, I was – and maybe you, you might not be able to give this answer, and I'm totally going from memory here, and I could be way off. The last time I could – now, I've been here ever since Purdue's uh, – ever since Matt Painter's been here as the head coach. The last time I remembered us playing zone, I think, I think – was in a Big Ten tournament when Jawan Johnson and that group were seniors. I think in a game against Minnesota, we might have played a couple possessions of zone. <laughs> I don't remember. It's been that long ago. So ultimately, my question is, was the idea to play a little bit of zone strictly uh, scout-based? Scout yeah, scout-based. And scout more based. important, boo-booey-based yeah. probably. Yeah, and I think it wasn't that we, were, we weren't going to start in it, but it was something that if they went to this particular action, we were going to – kind of shrink shrink up, load to the basketball, uh, and give them a little bit different look. So what is the uh, – I know you coaches go back and you evaluate uh, when it's all said and done. When it was all said and done, did you really like, yeah, that, that zone was okay, or I didn't really like uh, it? Or? Like it – it was okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. But here's the deal. Whatever, whatever you choose to do against great players, they're going to get it figured out. Yeah, right. right. Uh, and he's a great player. I think the best way to deal with him is when he graduates, and I say that with the <laughs> highest respect for yes. him. He is, <laughs> yes. he is one heck of a player. Uh, well, no, nothing else. Uh, when he's old and gray, he'll be able to tell whomever will listen, I was so good I actually made Purdue play zone. Yeah, That's how go. good Boo Boo he was. He he's actually good. made Purdue uh, play zone Defense, defensively overall, Coach Lusk, and I think most of our fans know this, but if they don't, uh, you and uh, Terry Johnson both look over the defensive side of the ball for Purdue. What uh, what are your feelings on how we play defense this year? You've been you've been pleased Good, with yeah. what you've seen. We we've our numbers have improved. Um, you know, Zach accounts for so much. Yeah. Like uh, when he's in there plugging things up, but our our guys have gotten better. Um, you get better with experience. They understand what we're trying to do. Like you, you have to you have to change things from game to game because each opponent is different. But like ultimately, you're going to rely on your principles, mm -hmm. um, and I think we've we've done a pretty good job with that. Uh, how uh, and two guys want to ask specifically uh, Camden Heidi because he's obviously new to just playing, yep. and Lance Jones being new to the Purdue system. How do you feel like those two guys have come around defensively? Because it's a tough system to learn. Yeah, I mean, defense is like it, it's generally going to get you on the floor. Uh, and I think Cam, being in the program, he has a better grasp of what we're trying to do. Lance is really good on the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got to continue to get better off the ball. But, like, uh, both of those guys have done a good job. They've got, they've got some physical tools, right? They're strong. They're athletic. I thought Lance did a really good job on A.J. Storr the other night, who's mm -hmm. a terrific yeah. – talent and player he he had 14 points but he had them on 14 shots right right yeah yeah good point uh more with coach lusk when we come back here to walk-ons this is the matt painter show presented by jimco on the purdue global sports network and this is boilermaker basketball from learfield direct look would have given it to Edie. jones steps into it a three is a local kid having a ball 
Smith gets to the rim, plus one. And flexing. Probing. Drop step. Denied. Do not go in there on Zach Eady. That time, nice drop step. Unfortunately, the leading tower with his impact. Nice read by Eady. That zone up. Effective. Trying to go through Ren early here. 36-34, Jones tosses it up, gets it to go! Does that contest threw him off a little bit? What a counter! Bullseye for... Hepburn feed it. Crowd. Oh, that's denied. And it's Edie. And... Bullet feed. Edie takes it off the glass and in. Badgers are now 3 of 11 from downtown. Look at this alley here. Oh! Try it all, but Smith fakes as though the screen is coming to the top of the key, and he pounds it home. So far by Wall. Look at this. Wall. Stymie. And knock away. Wall. Rejected by Edie. Uh, just so tough against them. Giving away those inches. You really got to look for a cutter. One way of getting around it. This is just offense at its best. You lock and load. Tijan, deep one. Off the rim. Look who's yeah. there. The offensive board. Wall, knock away. Smith gets a piece, and it's a turnover. Jones rushing ahead. Jones takes it in for two. Big, Big bucket for Purdue. Big turnaround. You're right. Smith with the active hands. And another steal. Braden Smith. Welcome back to the Matt Painter Show, presented by Jim Co. Live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Jim Co. Constructors supporting our Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of this Matt Painter Show. They're a proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Jim Co. Constructors says Boiler Up. And Purdue Athletics would like to thank and recognize members of the Black and Gold Club who support Purdue Athletics through their sponsorship at the highest level. Black and Gold Club members include Indiana Packers, Molson Coors, Purdue Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, Rorman Automotive Group, and Wabash, each great partners of Purdue Athletics. Uh, Coach Lusk, I do want to I want to chat with you about this because we don't often have time to speak on this very topic, and that is the role of the scout team. Uh, yeah. For those who don't know, Coach Lusk, that's kind of his baby. One of the things he handles in practice is getting the scout team guys up to speed offensively on what the other team is going to run to then go against our regular guys, uh, our regulars in the in the rotation when it comes to defense. So how big of a role are, are those guys, and well, how good have they been this year? Well, they're very important. And, like, obviously they're not getting into a lot of games, all right? So people don't get to see what they do or their contributions. But it's the day-to-day -day grind, having a great attitude. But, you know, when we prep for a game, generally two days out, we get them together, hey, you're going to be this guy, you're going to be this guy. And then we – Terry. Uh, let me stop you there. So who got to play the role of Boo Booey? Well, they all wanted to be yeah, Boo Booey. No, they all even, did. Yes. Even Will Berg, you know, he <laughs> yeah. wants to. But, uh, yeah, you get to shoot all I the time. I think Chase was Boo Booey. But, okay. like, and, and then you take them through uh, their actions of what they're running. Uh, and it's very valuable because they give our guys uh, a game a game look uh, at, at game speed. So they've done a great job with it. Um, it's important to them. And I mm -hmm. think the guys that play – they really value their efforts. They know that they're trying to get them ready to play for the game. Uh, my broadcast partner, Bobby Riddell, tells a great story, and I hope I get the story right, but when he was on the scout team, uh, when we were preparing for Davidson, he got to be Steph Curry, and he said it's the funnest practice he ever had in his yeah, entire life. Yeah. yeah, Bobby was part of scout teams, and, like, they, they, they're pivotal. Like, they, they come to practice. Uh, they're going to get the guys juiced up. It's competitive. They're going to run their actions. They're going to do what they do on defense. Uh, the post trapping of Zach, so they do a great job with it. They take pride in it, and it's it it's uh, we're very appreciative of it. And you know that they take some great satisfaction in when something works well for our club in game, and it's something that they showed them in practice. They're like, yeah, we yeah, we help those well, guys know that. Yeah, what's funny too is like you're putting the other team's actions in, so like we'll tell them, hey, run this, and 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 the starting five or the backups will guard that. 
versus the scout team. And then if the scout team ever gets in at the end of the game, what you want to tell them to do is just run their actions. Run the team that we're playing. <laughs> right. Run their do actions they against do. them. Yes, so, but right. they do a great job with it. <laughs> uh, okay, I promised our fans we're going to talk about that rematch with Indiana, and we will when we come back on the other side of this timeout. Purdue and Indiana coming up Saturday night. We'll talk about the Hoosiers when we come back. This is Matt Painter Show presented by Jimco on the Purdue Global Sports Network and this Boilermaker basketball from Smith, Nicholson chasing him out. That leaves Edie alone against Barnhouse. The Cats want to be up with the screen. You've got Kaufman Wren posting Barnheiser, but that whole backside of the floor. But it's strong on the three from Barnheiser. Smith looking to push ahead to Jones to the rim for two. Of late, travel. So far it has. Three of five from three. They were shooting 57% the last two games from three. His lawyer answers with one of his own. Group that they have shot the ball so well. In a more offensive oriented group. Right. He really struggled in that first half. He's right at the ship in the second. Gillis, the open man. What a to Edie. There's the trap from Martinelli. Return to Jones for three. Rattles home for time at 66. Edie has the trap. Back to Jones. Got the open look. Same result. That's like the same exact. Bouncing to Edie. Hunger all over and count the bucket. But Braden Smith is equally as good. Never panics. Could have let this fly. But instead, he, he makes the right decision. A minute gone in overtime. Smith to Edie oh! for two plus one. Going to be the weak side help man. As Edie rolls, he's got to take on Edie. Gets him a little bit, but he's scared about getting back out to Lance Jones. See if they go out and Barry goes down. Inside to Edie. A laser pass for Braden. Smith. This ball needs to go inside. There goes Edie on the roll. Smith oh, right. big run. Northwestern Wildcat go down. The footwork on this play, though, is just excellent. So many guys in the court. Smith off the shot fake. Open lawyer for three. And just an incredible pass again. We've said it so many times. Fletcher Lawyer's wide open, and Sam Cassell would be so proud. Hey fans, everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons here in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Maybe this Saturday would be a good time to stop by walk-ons here with Purdue playing the 8 o'clock Saturday night game against Indiana at Mackey Arena. Uh, I want to give a quick shout-out to the paint crew. Uh, Jaden is here. He's uh, one of the uh, officers with the paint crew. They took a busload of, of about 55 to the game at the Kohl Center on Sunday, so thank you, paint crew, for doing that. Uh, they were loud and proud. Even though the Badgers stuck them up in the upper rafters, we still could hear you guys, so thank you, Paint Crew. That was awesome to have you guys with us in Madison on Sunday for that win. Uh, all right, here we go. Yes? I think you were wanted over there. Fort Wayne represented? Fort Wayne. Oh, oh yeah, we're representing at the show. Yes, we do have a nice little group here from Fort Wayne that have all driven all the way from Fort Wayne to West Lafayette to enjoy our show. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for being a part of our show tonight. Everyone wants to be a part of the Rob Blackman show. I'm sorry, it's not the Rob Blackman show. No. Nah. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Probably not anytime soon. Uh, Coach Lust, let's talk about the rematch with Indiana. Played them back on January the 16th. Won that game 87-66. I was just looking up some of the numbers from that uh, from that game. Out rebounded them 42 to 34. Zach Eady went for 33 and 14. That never hurts. But he was 11 of 12 with the foul line and. Your ball club only turned it over eight times, eight times on the road in a hostile environment. You're going to win a lot of games doing that. Yeah, that's a recipe for success for us. And, like, it, it, it's going to continue to be really important. Um, I believe they play tonight against Ohio State. They do, yep. Like, uh, the last game is the last game. That's over mm. with. Like, it doesn't matter what happened in that game. Uh, you have to be ready to go. Um, it's really about us, Rob. Like, we we prepare uh, for everyone that we're going to play. We prepare for the opponent. We put the scouting report in. Um, we prepare like crazy. But at the end of the day, uh, we've got a mature enough group. Like, we, we really have to concentrate on what we're doing. Uh, we have to know what they're doing. But, like, it's about 
you know, our mindset, what we're doing, are we executing, are we taking care of the ball, are we relying on our principles, and I think that's, that's a thing that our group's been able to do. I think the other thing, too, is like everybody we play, you know, you've talked about it, the court star means when you're ranked as high as we've been ranked, um, everybody, all these kids in programs want to knock us off. Sure. It's understandable. Right. It's part of it. Um, so, like, our guys have to have a mature approach that we're going to generally get everyone's best shot. Um, and as I said, it goes back to the details, the attention to the detail, the scouting. But, like, at the end of the day, you have to know what the other group's doing, but it's about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And are we playing at a very high level and giving ourselves the best chance to win? Uh, Purdue shot 37% from three in that game. Fletcher Lawyer was awesome. He was four of four from the three-point line uh, in that game against Indiana. So, why? I'm glad you brought that up. I heard uh, Coach Painter say this to our ball club. It was, I don't know, five, six, seven games ago. Maybe it was right before we started this seven-game winning streak. I'm not sure. But he, he, you guys had the team gathered for film or something, and, and Coach Painter said, you know, we get everyone's best shot because of where we are right now in the rankings. Who says we shouldn't give them our best shot? I thought that was such so well said. Yeah. There's no rule that says, well, we're ranked number two or number one, so we have to take your best shot and we can, we can just give you a mediocre effort. Why can't we give you our best right. shot every time? That is a big key, right? Yeah, I mean, normal human behavior is going to tell you when you play a ranked team, did we have a little bit more juice when we played Arizona and they were number sure. one in the country? Yeah. We probably, our fans had a little bit more juice. It's to the point, though, as, as we've mentioned, we're really highly ranked and and uh, it's just going to be about us being at our best, being prepared, being mentally hooked up, um, and, and, and playing the best game that we can play. It's really not about the opponent. Like, you, you hear coaches say that. Like, as I said, you have to prepare. You have to know what they're doing. Uh, but it's, it's about what we're doing. To me, I, I guess I really felt the weight of being number one when it happened for the first time ever, and we went to Rutgers that very first game, right after being ranked number one in the in, – in, the, uh, it didn't last very long. Yeah, but well, it was about the effort, the enthusiasm, the, the you know, the, as you said, the juice that we got from the other team. I'm like, this must be what it's like to be, say, a Duke or a Kentucky. It, it, You're it, getting this, and now we're in that same conversation. We're getting everyone's best every single game. Yeah, it's it's it makes you appreciate those programs that are consistently there um, because they're getting everyone's best shot each and every night. That's what we're getting. Um, it's, it's a good thing. Like our guys, they've handled it the right way. Uh, they don't even think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The ranking or what's next or if we play this, you know, we're, we're one up in the Big Ten. Like it's about that particular game. It's about that particular day in practice. It's about going back. So we, you, you win a lot of games. Well, what are you telling them in film? And Coach Painter always talks about it. You're still making mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like can we clean those up and can we get better? Final segment of the Coach Painter Show. When we come back, it's presented by Jim Co. This is Purdue Global Sports Network. And this is Boy to Make a Basketball from Learfield. Make be the more physical team. Multiple efforts, all right? Don't make just one play. Let's play harder than that. All right, let's go, Keep on rocking. Keep, keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. This is all right. Everybody hands in the air. Jones Lord tonight. Oh. That's just so high level. The fact that he can whip that thing across his body. Spin. Nice decision there by Brayden Smith. And you got a defender helping up Hill. And he wisely just dumps that up. Gillis is in the six man of the year discussion. Beast on the offensive glass and shooting a ridiculous almost 52% from three. That's the power of Zach Eaton there. Eating there. Wears you out into the body of Edie. And if you don't take up that space, he is going to put it on top of your head. The footwork on this play, though, is just excellent. When it's winning time, look for the best player in basketball. Open Lawyer. 4 3. The 16th assist. Fletcher Lawyer's wide open, and Sam Cassell would be so proud. What a way to end January. Can you throw it? Is he up in your...
like that. Okay, we'll flip flop at this. Badgers are now three of eleven from downtown. Look at this alley you Oh, it's Edie upstairs. They try it all, but Smith fakes as though the screen is coming to the top of the key, and Edie pounds it home. Final segment here of the Matt Painter, uh, Painter Show, live tonight from Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. And, again, a huge thanks to assistant coach Paul Lusk for filling in and doing the heavy lifting today for Coach Painter. All right, here's a nugget for you. And, no, I'm not trying to get the cart in front of the horse. And, no, I'm not trying to jinx our Boilermakers here down the stretch. But I did find it interesting, doing a little research earlier today, that remember now Purdue lost the Big Ten season opener at Northwestern, that was on December the 1st. We started the Big Ten season 0-1. Yet here we are in a position to win our 26th Big Ten regular season championship with a one and a half game lead with eight to play. So I got to thinking, how often in the first 25 championships have we started off 0-1 and yet still came back to win the whole thing? Any guesses? You can just hold up a number of fingers 25 times. Some say three, some say 10. Some say one. It's actually four. Four times. If you had four, congratulations. Four times Purdue has started 0-1 in the Big Ten, yet went on to win the Big Ten title. Of course, who could forget that super exciting game back in 1926 when Purdue was at Ohio State and lost 28-25 in the Big Ten opener? Well, what a thriller that must have been under the guidance of Piggy Lambert. In 1979, we also lost at Ohio State in the Big Ten opener. Lee Rose was the coach. 75-71 was the final, but we went on to win the Big Ten. In 1995, we lost at Michigan in the Big Ten opener under Gene Cady, 71-61. And it's actually also happened under Coach Painter. I should have remembered this because it wasn't that long ago. But in 2019, if you remember the 2018-2019 season, we lost the Big Ten opener at Michigan. Uh, we got whooped, actually, 76-57. I had forgotten about Maybe I'd purposely forgotten about that game. But that's how we started the Big Ten season came back to win the Big Ten in the, as, as the 2019 champs under Coach Painter. So it's happened four times before. Could this be the fifth? Fingers crossed. Uh, thank you to Ethan Sargent, who was our in-studio engineer tonight. Thanks to Wes Scott Engineering here in Walk-On's Restaurant. 8 o'clock, Saturday night, tip-off, Purdue and Indiana. Our broadcast will start at 7 here on the Purdue Radio Network. Have a great rest of your week, everyone.